Good day. X-Ray Ed back with you once again for another exciting episode of X-Ray Education. Okay, so today what we've got is something really, really short and sweet. Just going to talk momentarily about chest X-rays because the other day in lab we were positioning uh, for chest X-rays and I was thinking about this. Um, okay, air fluid levels versus uh, positioning for chest X-ray. Bear with me a minute. I promise this is going to make sense. Okay, so I had a coworker once upon a time who wanted to shoot all of her chest x-rays with a horizontal central ray because she said we needed to be seeing the fluid levels, which is true. Okay, fluid levels are very important in chest radiography, you know, in case somebody has an effusion or a hemothorax or whatever their issue is, that there's excess fluid in the chest that should not be there. We definitely want to demonstrate that for the doctor. Okay. However, every chest x-ray she shot was hideously lordotic. Okay, so that didn't work out too well. Um, I and I want to show you what's up with that. Okay, so hang on just a second. I'm about to go over to the chest stand. Okay, so here we have a garden variety chest stand. And, oh man, okay. Right marker on the chest stand is great, but uh, it doesn't really help us that much most of the time, does it? We usually do a left lateral, so I usually mark my chest x-rays with a left marker instead of a right marker. But what the heck. Okay, so what happens? In the room, when we're doing x-rays at the chest stand, then what we can do is, you know, ask our patient to get really, really close to the chest board and lean into it. Okay, so what does that do? Well, that brings my sternum. See how my sternum is kind of a ramp here? Okay, whenever I lean into the chest stand, then my sternum is flat up against this chest stand. Then with a horizontal central ray coming in from behind me, effectively, my central ray is perpendicular to my sternum at that point, which is gonna put my medial clavicular ends at around T3 gonna please the doctor, right? Because now we've got any fluid levels demonstrated, plus we've got correct positioning with the clavicles at T3. Okay, but look what happens whenever I uh, try to position bony over here. Hang on just a second. Okay, ma'am, just gonna sit you up nice and straight in the bed here. All right, I've already pulled the patient up in the bed as high as I can get them. Well, not exactly, but as high as I can get them without pulling them off the end of the stretch. All right, so. Okay. All right, that's it. That's as high up as my stretcher will go. Now, some patients, if you do this, they're going to be screaming in uh, gut-wrenching agony because, you know, they're hurting for certain. You may not be able to get them set up this high, but the main thing I wanted y'all to see is this. Sorry, y'all, going kind of quick and dirty because my coworkers are going to be here any time now, and then I'll have to give up the lab. But, okay, so, as you can see, I've got a nice horizontal central ray pointing at approximately the level of T7-ish. Okay, so I've got this nice horizontal central ray, but what's going to happen whenever I take that image? Well, the patient's laid way back, and so we're not going to see um, a good... It's going to be a really lordotic image. Now, we can fix that. What I can do is I can angle my tube down because the patient's sternum, patient's sternum right here, okay, if I put my hand on that sternum, then I know I need to have a pretty steep downward angle in order to be able to show um, the clavicular ends at approximately the level of T3. So I probably need... Oh, golly. Okay, my intuition tells me an angle of about that is going to do what we need it to. Okay, so angulation. I'm going to just collimate here a little bit. Sorry, I know I'm a stickler for collimation. All right, now we're pointing approximately at the, the level of T7, and we're perpendicular to the... Um, Sternum, thank you very much, but look at the angulation on this tube. 
Okay, the angulation on this tube is, I don't know if y'all can read that or not. It's 57 degrees off of vertical, which is, let's see, 90 minus 57. That's what, 33 degrees? Yeah, that's like a 33 degree down angle into the patient. All right, um, and from our experimentation earlier, we discovered that if you have an angulation of more than 10 degrees, so you're allowed to angle your tube into the patient, there's no doubt, um, but if you angle the tube more than 10 degrees down, so in this case, Let's see, 90 minus 10 would be 80. And you're probably wondering, well, what's so special about 10 degrees? Well, what we discovered by experimentation in the laboratory is that when you angle the tube more than 10 degrees, you lose your air fluid levels. You can't really see those anymore. So what's the solution? Well, what some techs do is this. They'll take one X-ray, one chest X-ray, with the image, um, you know, take the image per with the central ray perpendicular to the sternum. Okay, that gives you your good anatomic layout without excessive foreshortening. Then, if there's fluid evidenced, because you can kind of tell if there's fluid evidenced, then what they'll do is uh, take another lordotic X-ray with the with the tube, you know, horizontal, and that'll show the fluid levels and give them both to the radiologist. Okay, that way he's got one that's anatomically accurate, and then he's got another one that demonstrates any fluid levels. That's totally a possibility. But um, if you're angling into the sternum on a portable chest X-ray, it is really, really, uh, it, it's nigh on impossible to get those fluid levels because you're always using more than 10 degrees down angle. Okay, so thank you all very much. I appreciate your kind attention as always, and I hope everybody's having a great semester. And um, yeah, we'll be back again with another exciting episode of X-Ray Education. See you next time. All right, so thanks for joining us for this episode of X-Ray Education. Hopefully it was at least somewhat informative. And yeah, I hope everybody's having a great semester and looking forward to seeing you next time um, when we can have some students in the laboratory. And yeah, so everybody have a great day. Peace. And I'll talk to y'all later.